In just a couple months, I'll complete three years as a full-time software engineer, which is absolutely crazy, I know. And in that time, I've learned so many lessons. So I was wondering if I could go back in time with all the knowledge I have today, what would I do differently? And maybe more importantly, where would I be today? So I hope you can learn from my mistakes and apply some of this wisdom into your own personal and professional growth. Thanks to Lexus USA for sponsoring this video. Let's start by going back to the early days when I learned my first and arguably most important lesson, something I still think about every single day. Lesson number one, writing more code does not make you better. Naive me thought the more code I wrote, the better of a software engineer I was. And I'm sure there's some correlation here, especially when you're early in your career and more junior. But today, I feel like this couldn't be farther from the truth. I might even go as far as to say the best software engineers actually write the least amount of code. And it's not because they're busy designing or architecting some system or attending meetings, which they are, but more because they think of everything in terms of efficiency, the best way to do something to accomplish some task. Can they reuse existing code or components? Can they refactor some module to make their life easier? Or can they think about something more abstractly to help them out? And they also delete a lot of code. Yes, you heard me correctly. People forget that writing code means more code to maintain, to test, and more potential bugs. But if you delete code, it's gone. The thing isn't there anymore, which means you are no longer responsible for it, which is very freeing. Back in the day, I would measure my impact by looking at my GitHub contributions. And I know this sounds ridiculous, and I'm not proud of this, but literally every week I'd look back to make sure my ranking was increasing, I was writing more code per day, making more PRs. I was so obsessed with keeping my green streak alive. And these are all such terrible metrics to index on. Rather, you should care about writing the cleanest code possible in the most efficient way, which basically means only coding when absolutely necessary. And believe it or not, this incorrect mindset was actually slowing me down because it translated into me making ginormous PRs, like hundreds of lines of code, and then receiving a ton of comments from a variety of different people. And it's funny, usually you have the opposite problem because the denser and longer the PR, the quicker it gets reviewed because people are lazy and they just, they're like, okay, you probably know what you're doing, rubber stamp. But because I was new at the company and people took my growth seriously, they wanted to give me a lot of feedback to make sure they were teaching me the right conventions and industry standards. And this translated to row sessions, not session, multiple row sessions, back and forth. I would fix a comment, then I get roasted on the fix. Then I have to go fix something else and it would take days to get my PRs approved. The best engineers paralyze their work to make sure that they're never blocked. When one thing slows down, they just switch gears and work on something else. So they're always making forward progress. And this usually means writing less code more often rather than huge chunks of code every so often. Tactically, this means creating smaller PRs, each a bite-sized chunk, with ideally no dependency between these different PRs. So if you're blocked on one PR because you have comments or tests are still failing, you can just switch gears and work on something else. And if something does end up breaking in production, it's so much quicker to figure out what went wrong. Rather than combing through 500 lines of code, you just go to the offending PR, comb through 15 or 20 lines of code, figure out the problem and move really quickly. I promise you the on-call engineer will thank you. Lesson number two. Remote work is nothing like in-person work. I feel like I failed to realize how different they truly were, especially when it came to people interactions. I used to be very blunt and confrontational and expected absolute transparency, no matter the cost. So I would ask pretty hard hitting questions in public, like literally in a Zoom town hall with every single person in the company, I'd ask questions around the business metrics and hiring and morale. And then at one of my one-on-ones with my manager, he mentioned that through the grapevine, he had heard some feedback where people were kind of concerned about me. And I was shocked, so I asked him, what do you mean? And he was like, well, you seem to be asking a lot of negative questions, so people are concerned that you're burning out or want to leave the company or just not happy. And that couldn't have been further from the truth. I was energized, I loved the company, I wanted to work hard and make it successful. But that's when I realized it clicked. What you're saying matters just as much as how it's being perceived. And after thinking a little bit longer, I realized why that was the case. I was asking these questions through Zoom chat with my mic off, no video. And so you couldn't tell my tone, how I was acting, the, my facial expressions. And so it's obvious if you read a serious question and there's multiple of them, you're going to be like, hmm, this dude is kind of negative. And then secondly, I'm asking all these questions very publicly, almost like I'm attacking someone. And so then people start thinking like, why now? Why here? Like, is he trying to make a statement? And thinking back, I probably was. I wanted to be that guy that would keep our leadership accountable. So I took the feedback in stride and set up a coffee chat with my CEO where I asked him every single question on my mind. He answered them all and 
I was happy. Now, before I do anything, I first think, is this the time and the place for me to do this? Or is there some other opportunity, maybe in the future, that's gonna be better and increase the likelihood that I get what I want? It's like in our personal lives, we can't fight every single battle. So we have to be pragmatic and choose them carefully, the ones that really matter. In honor of the upcoming Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, let's talk about a company that continues to innovate, especially in the EV space, Lexus. As you probably already know, there are three different types of electrified vehicles. Hybrids, like the Lexus RX 500H, plug-in hybrids, like the Lexus NX plug-in hybrid EV, and fully electric vehicles, like the all-new Lexus RZ. Rooted in AAPI excellence, Lexus is a brand and a business focuses on the principles of omotenashi, a tenet of Japanese culture that involves wholeheartedly looking after the guest. This principle follows in everything that they do. For Lexus, electric vehicles aren't just a trend, they're a legacy of progress. The Lexus Electrified movement centers on quality and sustainability, all while delivering the comfort and luxury, performance and handling, and safety and reliability that Lexus is known for. With that, I want to leave you with the Lexus Covenant, something I think we all can use in our lives. If you think you can, you will. If you think you can't, you won't. We can, we will. Lesson number three, do the extracurriculars. We're all so different in terms of what we're good at and maybe even more importantly, what we enjoy doing. Some of us are highly technical, others are creative, some people are introverted, others are extroverted. So I encourage you to find opportunities in your workplace to flex some of those muscles, your strengths. For example, in software engineering, you write code, obviously, and hopefully you're kind of good at it or at least enjoy it. But coding is not the only thing you do. Personally, I'm very creative and this YouTube channel is probably a testament to that. So I spend a lot of time trying to do the other things I enjoy. And the classic meme is, oh, I'm gonna go work on the business side. And there's so much more than just the technical and the business side. There's what I'm gonna call extracurriculars, this kind of third bucket. Let me tell you a quick story. About a year into my new job, I realized that we didn't have an engineering blog and all the companies that I respected, all these highly technical companies had engineering blogs and I would read them and be inspired by them and just be in awe at all the cool stuff that they were building. And my company was no different. We were awesome. We had highly ambitious, intelligent people building very complex systems in-house, but we weren't showing them off to the world. We weren't writing about them or sharing our learnings. And I wanted that to change. I made the case to leadership that this would help our global brand. And then also with hiring because engineers would find us on our engineering blog and be like, this is really cool. I wanna go work on these hard problems. And so I got to work, I put out a proposal and launched the blog, which still exists today. And I'm technically editor in chief, so you can go check it out. I also helped organize our hackathons and ended up emceeing during our final presentations. To me, I mean, I love talking, obviously. So I was having a great time, but leadership noticed and complimented me on my skills. And I got this new sense of visibility that I hadn't gotten before. And it's one that is very hard to achieve just technically. You can only do it when you do the extracurriculars. Turns out when you do the things you enjoy, they don't feel like work, but they also make a huge difference. And that's win, win, win. Looking back, I wish I had done more projects like this. And I try to carve out some time every week to think about these things because creativity makes my heart happy while all the other technical stuff makes my brain happy. Lesson number four, writing over talking. One of my company's core values is writing over talking. And to me, it was really overrated and at worst burdensome. Ugh, every time I wanna do something, I have to go write it down, share it out, get feedback, iterate, before I can write any code, it's slowing me down. Turns out this is one of the best things I've ever learned. And over time, it's become a habit. Let me tell you a quick story. I remember there was a time when I was working on a project and my manager said, go talk to the senior engineer to make sure they're on board with your design. And I'd written nothing down. I was just about to go code it because I knew my design in my head. And he was like, no, I want you to make sure that they're okay with it. So I ordered the senior engineer over a Zoom call and I basically tell her what I'm thinking. And she disagrees, like entirely, not with just a small part. She was like, this is wrong. And I'm like, uh, okay but I don't think it's that wrong. I mean, I hear you, but I feel like it's a good start. And she's like, no. I don't really know how to resolve this conflict, especially because she's way more senior than me. So I'm just like, I have to defer to your knowledge because it's weird to be like, I'm better than you, but I'm more junior and younger. So I go to my manager, I'm like, I don't really know how to tackle this. And he's like, well, let me see the doc you wrote. And I was like, what doc? And he was like, write a doc so we can see what you're thinking and then share it with that person and get her to write her comments offline and then go share it with the rest of the team. There's also other engineers here that might be able to give you some perspective. And I was like, not very happy, but I wanted to move forward and actually code this thing. So I go write up this document, I send it out 
and I get a bunch of comments and there's a bunch of stuff I missed and didn't think about. And I was like, wait, this is awesome. And uh, instead of just going to that one senior engineer, I set up a review Zoom meeting at the end of the week. All the engineers on the team come on, we have a great discussion and we come up with a design that's partially what I was thinking, partially what the other senior engineer were thinking, along with a bunch of great feedback from the rest of the team. And that's when I learned the importance of writing things down for a couple of reasons. One, you have a documentation trail. So three months from now, if you're like, huh, what did I do that? You can go open up the doc and read about it. Or even better, if a new engineer joins the team and they wanna onboard onto your system, you can be like, hey, go read this to get a sense of everything we kind of thought about and then why we ultimately went with the final solution. It's also great for when you're trying to get promoted. When someone asks you, hey, what have you worked on? Pull up all the docs you wrote and be like, this stuff. It's kind of like that blog post example we talked about. Lesson number five, show not tell. Last, but certainly not least, engineers are notorious for not flexing their achievements. And I'm not saying go out there and be obnoxious, but show the world all the cool stuff you're building. Don't stay silent and wait for your manager or your product manager to shout you out in some Slack channel. Get ahead of that, you built that system, own it. Take the initiative, demo your work at an engine-wide meeting or a company-wide announcement, or go write that Slack post by yourself, be like, hey, Super excited and pumped to launch this new feature. Thanks to everyone that helped. Go try it out. Let me know if you have any feedback. Be an owner of the thing you built. Basically, be the point person for every positive change you've introduced at the company, both technical and non-technical. Make a lot of noise. I remember way back, my manager would give me a heads up in a one-on-one, be like, hey, Numen, great work. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a public kudos. And I'd get like really weird about it. I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't want you to kind of gloat about my achievements. I want my technical work to speak for itself, no human fluff. But we're human, stories matter. Remember when I told you how people perceive your impact or work is just as important as what you're actually doing? Well, it couldn't be more true. Business impact matters a lot, but if someone can't even tell you did it, then did you even really do it? I'd recommend taking as many opportunities as you can to show off all the awesome stuff you're building. Be the point person, be a subject matter expert. When someone thinks of something in that company, they should associate your name with it because you built it. And on the side, keep a running doc, what I like to call a hype doc of all the stuff you're building. It's great for when promo season comes around and you have to remember all the stuff you built. Just go to this document and you have all the projects kind of listed. And then maybe if you leave the company and are interviewing and need to brush up your resume, again, you can go to this running log and figure out all the awesome stuff you built, pick and choose some of the best projects and then showcase those. As I'm approaching almost three years in industry as a full-time software engineer, I can't help but reflect on all the positive and not so positive memories. Hopefully these five lessons help you in your own journey, both personally and professionally, as you go and reach those next milestones. I'm rooting for you. Good luck with everything. I know you'll kill it. That's all I have. Till next time, cheers.